Hey, welcome. This is Peter Buswell for Dr. VOIP with another free online video tech tip. In this section, we're going to continue our discussion about the Shortel Contact Center and the Enterprise Contact Center options. And today we're going to talk about three options for callback. Abandon call, callback scripts, and dial lists. Three very exciting features to get the Shortel Contact Center to call back customers automatically. So let's take a look at these options one at a time. Of the three options available for calling back from the ECC, uh, the dial list is the most sophisticated of these applications and the one of the three options that is only available on the Shortel Enterprise Contact Center. So you will not find this option in the Contact Center, but in the ECC you will find it. And it's, uh, the concept is called dial lists. And in a dial list, um, we are able to basically feed the ECC a list uh, of telephone numbers. Typically, these are retrieved from a uh, database, a SQL database, and a system will go out there and gather up a list of, um, um, let's say, deadbeats for a credit collection application, and it will then uh, um, place phone calls to those uh, people and connect the uh, called party with an available reserved agent. So we're going to take a look at how to actually configure that. Again, I always emphasize the need to get your um, prompts recorded. It's uh, very frustrating to set up a script and not have the WAV file available. So go ahead and, and get your uh, prompts recorded. You will then uh, need to establish an OBDC connector uh, from the ECC to the database that uh, you're going to access uh, to retrieve your data. You're going to want to verify the database connectivity. There are call profile parameters that you will need to create in the ECC to store the data that you retrieve from the external database. Uh, you'll, you'll put these in um, little holding spaces uh, that will call profiles, call profiles. And then we will create the actual dial list parameters. We're going to test both the SQL query, the SQL update, um, and the dial list processing. We will take a look at each of these steps um, in the remainder of this video tech tip. The actual dial list uh, setup is pretty straightforward. Um, there are a number of tabs that we're interested in, the details tabs, input, output, scheduling, call profile, skills, advanced, dialing, down here on the end, it's the dialing rules. But at this time, uh, we've, we've already talked about the options uh, associated with the detail page. Uh, I've named my database uh, Deadbeats. I have uh, associated uh, a list, a group of agents who are in a service called dial list agents. So I may have many services in my system, but I want one particular group of agents to handle call lists. So. I've created a service unique to them. Do I want to play a message to the called party before I transfer the call to the agent? So the system's going to go out, get the database, find out who I need to call. It's going to place a phone call. As the call is answered, it's going to, if you like, you can optionally have a recorded announcement, for example, played to the caller. If so, check this. Um, my experience has been that answer supervision here is not as good as it could be, 
So I generally like to just transfer the call to the agent so the agent can hear the ring back tone and the agent can differentiate between an answering machine and a fax machine, etc. Do I want to re reserve the agent before the um, call is connected? Generally, we don't want to have a situation in which the system goes and places a call to an agent, um, excuse me, places a call to some party out of the dial list. Uh, they answer and there's nobody available to take the call and we end up transferring them to a service in which they listen to music and hang up and we're back where we started. So we want to, revert, we want to reserve the agent. And this will actually call us a little screen to pop up, which I'll show you, that indicates to the agent that a call is about to be made on his behalf, gives him 10 seconds here to respond. Uh, we can try this a number of times and retain for a number of days, etc. Uh, the import definitions uh, is where we go to see um, the actual uh, status uh, of manually importing uh, the calls or setting them up for auto automatic uh, calling based on the schedule. The current status indicates how many calls are you know, currently in handle. Are we actively uh, uh, placing calls at this time or not? And then we can optionally terminate an activity that already exists. Let's take a look at the input. The input is basically that we're going to use the OBDC connector that we previously established. Uh, it's uh, defined in the system level interfaces and was over here as an OBDC connector to the database uh, called call list. And in the call list database, we have a table called callback. And this uh, select from callbacks where status equals call. So we're going to go out there to that database. We can actually test it. And you can see here that the number of records uh, recovered was uh, five. I will point out to you here that um, the ECC does not like to have you put uh, limit uh, zeros comma 30 indicating get me the first 30 records. It likes to go and get 50 records. And if you put a limit here in your in your quarry you may have a problem so don't do that just let it go get the 50 records as you can see the connection works so we're going to read in this database we're going to put it into the values that uh, we have assigned in our call profile fields we did that at the system level and we're telling the system we're interested in phone number one we could uh, also say that we're interested in you know phone uh, uh, phone uh, number two, we want to give two options. But that's basically how we go and get our data. After the system places its data, uh, excuse me, retrieves the data and then places the phone calls, we may in fact want to have the status of the database updated to reflect that the call has failed or that the members of that database list or on a do not call list or that the call was successful. So here I have a SQL statement on a successful call which says update callbacks set status equal to OK. So if we do in fact return calls uh, that are successful, we'll update the status field as OK. Keep in mind back on the input side we're only going to import the records where the status says call. Now we're going to mark that as OK. So details, input, output, these are key components in addition to um, scheduling, which, uh, which we'll talk about now.